This week on Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are talking about Beer Fest at Sox Park. We're talking about Beguile Brewing, Alarmist, and then uh, Nick made it to uh, Tiki Whiskey Scotch Tasting on the Roof. Then we dive into some beer news at the end of the show. All that and more on this week's episode. Yeah, because, you know, he's going to court clock out. Boop, the other flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, how's, that, how's that beer? What do you think it is? It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, baby? I'm Nick White. And this week, we're going pantsless. Yeah, man. Take those goddamn pants off. Yeah, here good, we go. Good thing it's a podcast. <laughs> no, one, no one can see us under the table here. <laughs> I, yeah, but uh, welcome to the show. If you're a first-time listener, what we do here is we review beers, talk about drinking beers, and then talk about the beers we did drink. So a lot of talking about drinking. Yeah. That's what we do. We drink, we talk. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And the more we drink, the better the talking gets. <laughs> <laughs> Starts to flow after after one or two of these. Exactly. Uh, but we always kick things off here by uh, drinking a new beer from a local brewery in the area. And this one's from Alarmist. Right on, man. I'm excited. Uh, on the northwest side, uh, Pantsless Pale Ale, 6%. Um, this is their first can release, I think, right? The first can release, but third beer in cans. But their third beer. Yeah, so um, tall boy cans, four packs, six uh, percent uh, mosaic and uh, Matueka hops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was their kind of flagship beer when they first started out. Yeah. Uh, Gary Gully was going around to the brewery or the beer fest with this beer, and so I think it's been tweaked a little bit for the packaging, but it's great. I'm really digging this. I'm um, I'm right there with you, man. This was canned um, like maybe just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, um, lovely man. Tropical notes, you know, yeah. hint of herbalness. Yeah, and it has a nice little malt yeah. kick to it that doesn't feel it doesn't feel like too light and easy drinking. It has like a nice body to it. I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. And of course, there's a, a corporate guy on the uh, behind the L train. <laughs> uh huh. So yeah, it's continuing the story of uh, was it Earl? Yeah. Right. So this is where Earl. Um, Quit his corporate career and took his pants off. Yeah. And now he's a brewer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, tall boy cans. They, they just do the the plastic kind of sleeves, so a lot of blank cans. But it's like a thicker plastic. I don't know why. I like I'm <laughs> every, stickler for that. Every time, man. Brad's going to tell you about the... Uh, the can uh, feel. About the... About the <laughs> About the can feel. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, but we'll sip on this. Uh, mm. Probably dive in these other two here as we talk uh, about this week. Yeah. Uh, so kicking things off, Nick, what did you make it to last uh, week? Man, kind of a light week, man. Uh, I ended up at Craft Beer Night at Sox Park. Uh, the G Spot, uh, Guarantee Ray Field, you know, out out on the south side, the other baseball team in town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Now, last year, they did something. They do a beer night every night. Last year, I think, uh, when Miller Lite was the big, uh, the big sponsor, it was uh, Miller Lite, the Miller Lite party deck. Okay. And it was basically everything under the Miller Coors spectrum. So this is all like Big Eddie, Line and Cool, Miller stuff, right? Okay, makes um, sense. Yeah, but this year, uh, out Miller is out, and they just adopted this, you know, embracing of all crafts kind of uh situation down there yeah they are really pushing it hard i wonder is that a way to try to bring people in they're just like every ballpark has cheap yellow fizzy water like yeah. let's do something different to try to one get people over here because we're having trouble getting people here which is traditionally you know even when even when we won the title in 05 it's like really hard to get people to the cell <laughs> it's 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 it is what it is man or the oh, guaranteed rate or now. yeah or, or sorry the G rate, G rate field. All right, is what they're calling it. Um, but yeah, but like on the north side, it's uh, it's basically an AB house, and you'll have some uh, some Goose Island stuff there, and that's really it. There's like one old style tap, right? But a okay. really, really short list, right? And maybe like some um, there's some low and brow stuff and or Michelob stuff in there too. Okay. Um, oh, but here there's over seventy five uh, different craft beers. 
That's a lot. Yeah, and they converted the Miller Lite bullpen into the craft cave now, which I which I really dug. And then, um, so you go to the 500 level, and it's a craft beer festival, 18 brewers, you know, traditional jockey box, you know, straight up beer fest style. And then um, you go down to the 100 level for your seats. Okay. So this was a good time. It was actually my first time to Sox Park all year. So was the beer fest part running during the game? like? Mm. Or did the beer fest happen, then the game happened? Yeah, it was like uh, three hours before game time. Oh, okay. So when you got there, you get to see everybody taking so you're batting practice. Toast it. You're, you're completely gone for this game. By the so time, like, by the time seven like, o'clock rolls around, I'm gonna bounce for this. <laughs> like I don't know. It's like I think we went from the festival in the 500 level. You know, you got to sit in your seats for a little bit, right? For like an inning, right? Yeah. Sox ended up killing 13 to one that night too. Oh, but then so. Yeah, from the from upstairs to our seats for an inning, and then we went straight to the craft cave. Okay, which is you know, like all this uh, old school memorabilia, and then like all the um, the coolers and um, different beers and barrels. Goose Island's got a lot of barrels that you can use as like um, you know stand tabletop tabletops. Okay, yeah. So uh, it was, I had a great time, man. Um, let's see. Let's talk about a couple beers. Yeah. Oh, um, the Upland guys were there. They had their pedal to the kettle, which was like a. A nice, like, session okay. kettle sour. Yeah, they're out in Indiana. Yeah. Uh, Pantsless was there. It was my first time trying it there. Okay, so uh, little tie together here. Right. I had pantsless. the Pantsless. I was excited about that. I had the <laughs> Photophobia. That was there, too. Uh, cheers to Bader Brow. They got Southside Pride, which I think is really killing it for them at Sox Park. Okay. Which is a decocted uh, 4.5% lager, I believe. Nice. I think decoction just refers to, like... The way... Yeah, the, the, the way it's brewed, uh, big flavor, small ABV, right? Because cool. they change the temperature and the malt as it goes or something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, Moody Tongue was scheduled to be there, but no Moody Tongue, man. Mm. They just like, I don't know, they were no show. But their beer is at the park. Their beer is at the park. So you could go down to the Crave, the cave, and get Moody Tongue if you oh. want it. But That's the a... ca- cave's on 100 level, man. We're all the way up top. Their beer doesn't feel like baseball beer. Like, I'm just going to, like, <laughs> yeah. not... Not that there needs to be a definite, like, this is only for this occasion, yeah. but their beer is kind of poured in the glass, think about it, you know, it's a, I don't know, it's just... It's, you don't think like plastic cup and party yeah, when and you think Moody Tongue. lemon saison. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think, um, yeah, because they have bottles, I want to say of like, you know, maybe like the the Churro Porter and the, the, grape, the Grapefruit Pills, mm. and we're like, well, if they're not showing up, let's just... Let's just dig in and get it ourselves. But it wasn't cold. Okay. So we're like, well, let's just fall back and, you know, <laughs> and let's just go see what Mars is doing. So we went to Mars. Nice. Mars had the Jungle Boogie, but they also had the Double Splash. Oh, cool. Which was the, um, which is a double IPA that comes in like a, like a, it comes in glass. It comes in a large format. Nice. So I think it was everything that they sell there, but it was um, on draft or it was something that they didn't offer. You just know? Kind of showcasing. Okay. Yeah. So showcasing the beer, the, the breweries were showcasing things that, they don't sell at the park as uh-huh. well as the stuff you can get there. And you had to get the photo with the Southset Pride from Beta Brow, uh, right? So it's such like a such a perfect pairing, right? <laughs> those two. I know uh, Blue Island was there oh. because they were. I saw some photos from them on Instagram or Facebook of them setting up. And yeah. You know, uh, I think one or two of their beers are at the park, right? Yeah, I got. Um, I had the pale no the tile settler, mm. and he was saying like, yeah, those are all experimental hops. That oh, he cool. was he was fun. It was fun to play around with that pale ale. But their flagship is the um is something different. Fuck the name's escaping me. Yeah, I forget what their I'm not I don't it's see a, their it's beer. A flagship IPA too. Yeah, I've only been down there once. I don't see it a lot around town, but yeah, I forget. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know their names, but they're good. But that pale, the uh the the tile settler. The tile settler I really dug. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, so I was talking to the uh, the Pipeworks guys, mm-hmm. and one of the Pipeworks guys is this guy that used to always work at Three Floyds when I would go out there. Oh, and, yeah. you know, we, we talked for a minute because, you know, a few of those guys went over to to Pipeworks. Uh, okay. You know, and he's like, yeah, man, you know, we ha- it, it took a while to convince them, but they're going to they're gonna package and distribute um, Unicorn versus Zombie, which was the collab between those two. Oh. It was like a it was like a hazy double IPA. Who's packaging it? And who's... Uh, it sounds like Pipeworks is packaging it because it was a Pipeworks guy saying, "Hey, you know, they went ahead to talk with Floyd's, and you know, they're both on the same page about it now." So it sounds like it might be Pipeworks. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay, so that ought to be exciting because that yeah. beer was really good. It was a big beer, man. It was like eight point seven. Jeez. Okay. Well, like a, it was you've a... combined Pipeworks and 
three Floyds, you're going to get something yeah. big. What do you expect, right? <laughs> so I was excited about that. Um, the Lakeshore guys were there because a lot of these brands were on Lakeshore. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were excited about Alaska that's launching this week. Yeah. And then also um, they were saying that the uh, the Brooklyn Beer Mansion, Brooklyn was there. The Brooklyn Beer Mansion and the 312 Block Party are the same weekend. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 312 Block Party is coming up, yeah. which is a free event. So yeah. or they take like donations. So yeah, that's going to be a hard fest to compete with. Yeah. So um, it was a good time, man. You okay. know, I had a good time. Uh, Sox Park Beer Fest. Nice. Yeah, I should have yeah. I should have made it out because uh, it was a beautiful day. Like it was a perfect day for a ball game. I was afraid it was gonna be a little too cold. Yeah, but it was like what upper sixties, yeah. kind of not too bad. Especially you get a few beers in you, you're like you're good. Yeah, it was good stuff. I think um, you know the the ticket price is the ticket prices period all year long there are on point. The beer selection is is better. The food is better. Uh huh. I think. Yeah. I mean, the team's not as good, but it, right. it's a good experience down there. You can tailgate at Sox Park. So, right. Yeah. You know, it was really. I think Sox Park, the soccer, the soccer guys, and then Soldier Field are really the only places you can tailgate. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, while you did that. Uh, that evening, I went over to Alarmist. And this pantsless is nice, dude. Yeah. I, so I hit up uh, Alarmist, kind of just wanted to see what they were up to. Wanted to get some cans because I haven't seen the cans yet in stores. So I was like, I loved me some pantsless when I was drinking around town um, early on. So I had to pick that up. Uh, a lot of good beers on tap. The tap room, it was early Friday or Saturday evening, so it wasn't like that crowded. There was a few people in there. Um, seemed like people from the neighborhood like doing flights, asking a lot about the beer yeah. and kind of like, well, what's this style versus this style and kind of things like, like that. Really so, interested in what's going on. Yeah, um, which is what you really want from a brewery to bring in those people that are new, come here, drink our beer, you know, fall in love. Like, yeah. be, make us be your first love kind of idea. So, no, for that, sure. That was nice. Um, I believe we had like a porter and uh, I, don't, I forget the other one. So when, when you posted the pic to IG, man, they have, I'm surprised they have so many taps. Yeah. You know? And they have two uh, Firkins there oh, really? too. We were talking, um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, how about we don't see Firkins very often. Like they're just not, not around. But they got two of them and they're just kind of going through them. I feel like uh, that's probably Gary's influence. He's like an old school beer guy. So <laughs> yeah, when I think Firkin, I think uh, the old Goose Clybourne pub. Mm-hmm. They always had one. So that's yeah. cool. I didn't have a Firkin. I drove up there, so I was like, to have one or one and a half, and I was like, that's probably good. I don't, yeah, don't want to yeah. risk it or anything. Yeah. But yeah, cool spot. Definitely order food in and check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, early on in the week. I went to uh, Beguile because mm-hmm. I joined the Ski Ball League. Ski Ball? Ski Ball. They got Ski Ball over at Beguile. <laughs> that, why is, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, other bars got pinball. Yeah, There's arcade games. Pool or bowling over at Atlas yeah. or Burnt City. <laughs> yeah. um, but Ski Ball. I mean, you know, I would be down for some ski ball, man. Mm-hmm. You know, when so, I was a kid, I, when we go to Chuck E. Cheese, man, yeah, that was my jam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the downstairs they have one lane for ski ball, kind of like in this back room. They really then, got a ski ball league. That's yeah, funny. and then upstairs, that's really not open to the public. Uh-huh. That's where a lot of their barrels are. It's kind of like an event space. I feel like I don't know what they're gonna do with this, but they have two ski ball lanes upstairs and that's yeah. where most of the ski ball league goes down huh um but you know you're at a brewery you got a drink too now like, are you part of a ski ball team yeah part of a team <laughs> Wait, what's your team man? um we were going to be the ski amigos <laughs> that was taken really that was taken okay. so we are well one of the names that was pitched that i kind of liked but I, it got shut down was habit hepatitis ski oh man <laughs> no one wants to mess with hepatitis ski man, yeah <laughs> but we settled on are you skiing this there you go so then when we're doing real good we can go up and be like are you skiing this <laughs> like are you skiing what he's doing i think that's a step off from hepatitis <laughs> ski for sure <laughs> uh but uh. the beers at beguile they're always great Right now, or last week when I was there, I'm going to go there again after we're recording here. Mm-hmm. They have so many APAs on. Like it's like oh, it's like three to five American pale ales. 
which I love that style, but it's like, yeah, like damn. What, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I know they had like a, a Kolsch or a Pilsner on that someone was drinking. Someone else had a porter. They have a lot of beers, but like their bread and butter is like APAs. Yeah. Which is, you know, everyone has like their kind of thing. Like right. Haymark is all about Belgians, so they have yeah. a lot of different kind of varieties you of that. You go to the microphone, they're going to haze it out. There's like yeah. four or five hazy options. So it was just like not seeing that in so long i was like whoa there's a lot of apas it's like which apa did you get <laughs> well yeah there's free bird and there's yeah, yeah all these other ones yeah uh but i don't i don't i forget which one i had i had a couple of them but they were great and i'll revisit some tonight so i'll try to remember to take a photo and throw them up on our instagram account yeah so. Uh, those are my two breweries this week. You made it to like what one or two other things, right? Yeah, the Virginia Distilling Company launched in Chicago this week. They are the um, it's their only account uh, west of Virginia, right? So all okay. their stuff is on the East Coast, and um, yeah, so they basically have like a Scotch that they finish in Virginia wine cask. Oh. So it spends like you know four to six years in Scotland. It comes over here and in six months to a year, it finishes in this wine cask. Oh, cool. right? um, so they had a launch party at Joy District, which is in River North. So it's basically on the same block as um, like Rocket and, um, you know, like oh, okay. uh, Sullivan's, all that kind of River Northeast stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those those places. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, so, so it's next door to Hubbard Inn, which I've actually, we partied with the Guinness guys. That led to the to the Guinness trip was the Hubbard Inn night. Oh, okay. So I'm like, yo, I, I'd love that bar next door. And they were like, oh, yeah, we own that bar too. And I was like, oh, cool, because this was on a rooftop. And he's yeah. like, yeah, the rooftop next door, we wanted it to connect to the Joy the Joy District rooftop. But since they have different addresses, even though it's the same owner, the city wouldn't let them do it. They wouldn't let build like a, a, a path. Right. You know, kind of like, you know, how in the, in the bullpen, not the bullpen, but the, the you know, in the lake, in the ocean, in the yeah. ocean, in the lake where all the, all the boats come together. Yeah. In the playpen. Yeah. They wanted to do like a playpen over rooftops. The city was like, nah. That's a, that's pretty cool. If you could awesome. if you could travel from like, hey, I'm at this roof. I'm gonna go over there, and then you like come down in a different building. I was like, man, that sucks because it sounded like a cool idea. Come on, Chicago. <laughs> oh, but so they had like a tiki event up there, right? And yeah. then you know, I think on paper it sounds pretty cool. And then when I think tiki, I think you know, Lost Lake. I think you know, three dots and a dash. You know, there's some fun tiki options yeah. in the city, and many tiki places are like, and. Or I guess urban tiki stuff is like dark and kind of like squirreled away. Yeah. So like a rooftop tiki. This is different. Yeah. yeah it's not not what we're used to. And I think well, I thought whiskey was kind of a you know kind of a stretch because you know it's usually not that when tiki rum. Usually, tiki's rum. Yeah, it's not whiskey at all. And then this is more of a scotch than it is like a straight up rum okay. or weed whiskey. So I mean, it was different. It wasn't. They weren't my favorite cocktails, but it got me a chance to, you know, check out Joy Dish, Joy District. Okay. So that was cool. Yeah. Oh, they said Virginia's got 55 distilleries, man. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. That's pretty legit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I wanted to uh, check it out. The whiskey on its own I, was, was, was nice, but, yeah, and the cocktails were okay. Okay. So. Yeah. But, yeah, that's all I went to. Man, I feel like we had a full week here. That was not bad. I feel good about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pantsless. Oh, yeah, man. Shout out to the Beer Temple. I did oh, make a you stop went up there, yeah. over there, man. They have some righteous uh, neon signs in there, man. Uh, okay. One from Mars, one from Scratch, and one from Omnipolo. Uh, Omnipolo is, um, they say they're the only U.S. location that gets Omnipolo. Omnipolo sounds like they're these uh, they're gypsy brewers, right? And, you know, one guy is an illustrator, the other guy's a brewer. It sounds like pi- that's how a pipe works is. One guy's the mm-hmm. brewing, and the other guy's the illustrator. Okay. Right? It sounds a little bit like that. Oh, but they're gypsy brewers, not like pipe works. They're not, they're mm-hmm. not gypsy. Um, oh, and they have a, a, a dedicated scratch tap as well. Whoa. Yeah. So went over there to check those guys out. Um, no yeah. one has scratch in Chicago. I was like, dude, I don't think I've ever had scratch outside of a festival. The beer festival. Yeah. Or like on, you know, on tap. Forget about right. it. Only, I only have them at Bug and if. I go to the close of the Wells Park. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Maybe Fobab if they're there. But yeah, that's and yeah. that's uh, that's fun stuff. That was the one crew where I was at JBF a couple years ago, and I saw Randy Mosier, and he didn't even say hi. He was like, "You need to try this," and it was a scratch. It was a scratch yeah. beer that he was really excited about. Scratch is one of those breweries if you have like a long weekend because it's a drive. Like yeah. go down there. Was it Carbondale? Ava, Illinois. Right, so past Carbondale. Yeah. 
Because you get you can't drive to there in Chicago and back in the same weekend. Like it's just too much driving. Like it's, that, like, it's, it's, it's like not a day trip. It's like six six hours, right? Six to eight. Shit, that's like going to Minneapolis. It's far. Yeah. Or maybe it's not that far. Maybe it's like I think it might be. I think it's around six. Yeah. Because you're gonna hit traffic, of course. So you got to get there, and you probably have to like stay at like a Red Roof Inn or something or Holiday Inn. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave the light on for you. Yeah. Hey, do they um do they do? Can you go like as a as a mem- as a public citizen? Oh, like, I, I don't know. I've seen like pictures of the. I thought. I don't know. Why that I would said. suck to go and then be like, yeah, no, no, can't you, get in. No, we don't know you. Damn, I we're foraging know. today. Yeah, we're right. Yeah, we're right. We got a, we got our pig searching for truffles. Got- <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh man. All right, but now I I don't have to go. I just go to Beer Temple, which Screw is it. like down the street. It's like a mile from yeah. there, if that. It's Done. awesome. Deal. All right, all right. Solid week. We should get into what's happening this week. Yeah. Uh, a few fun events happening. For sure. Let's dive into it, man. We'll start at Thursday. All right. Thursday at Sheffield's. So that's uh, the fourteenth. It's uh, Rare Beer Night. So apparently every Oktoberfest, Rev does a Rare Beer Night at Sheffield's. I didn't know that. Yeah, they've got. Uh, Nitro Straight Jacket, Batch 1000, uh, Death Tar from Year 16, mm-hmm. and uh, oh, VSOD, the very special old Deeth. Okay. And uh, Bean Jean. Okay. So they got five or six of their cellar beers, if you will. Man, okay. Yeah, that's starting at uh, 6 p.m. at Sheffield's on Thursday the 14th. That's worth checking out. I feel like I haven't had any revolution that isn't Fist City and Pills in yeah. a while. Like. They have such a broad reach, and you can find them at just about any bar yeah. and any store in the city. But, uh, yeah, you'll rarely see these. Mm-hmm. So that does sound good. And they have that Street Fest coming up soon, too. Yeah, their Oktoberfest is a two-day party that's taken over right in, in Milwaukee. Front, yeah. right in Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, so that's coming up soon. I don't know the date for sure. I don't think it's this weekend. It might be this weekend. might be this weekend? Oh, uh, We should probably double-check that because yeah. that's where I'll be <laughs> if that's happening. <laughs> Uh, we didn't write that down, so uh, always love Revolution stuff. That uh, all the Jean lines are fantastic. Yeah, Blue Jean, yeah, Mean Jean. I feel like Bean Jean coffee. Bean, yeah, yeah, they're all they're all pretty good. Mm-hmm. I almost picked up uh, some Surly Coffee Vendor the other night because really? I was like, I needed like a coffee coffee porter. I was feeling like so that Bean Jean, really good. All right, so that fest though is on Thursday. Um, you got anything else on Thursday? No, let's slide right into Friday. Okay. Uh, Rev's Oktoberfest is the 29th. 20th, so it's a couple weeks away. Yeah. Okay. So um, not not Friday. No. Uh, um, but on Friday, uh, September 15th, uh, Temperance turns four years old already. Nice. Yeah. Okay. We've recorded the show here at Temperance. It was one of our first shows, I feel like. Our first remote shows. We yeah. haven't... We haven't ventured anywhere in a while. Man, what are we going to do, man? We got to get out here, man. I know. I got to talk to Kevin at Beguile, especially with the ski ball thing I'm doing. I'm already going to be over there on Tuesdays. Mm. Ski ball. So let's just, like, get on it. Brilliant. Ski ball. The ski yeah. ball tournament, brilliant. All right. I'm a, maybe he'll be there tonight, and I'll, I'll drop this. Is there a four-year party? Uh, they got the Fat Shallot food truck. Um, it's running from 5 p.m. all the way to midnight on Friday. And they'll have a mechanical bull oh. at that party. What? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? I rode. <laughs> <laughs> at, when I was out at Blue Island, there yeah. was the fest. Uh, what's the Rock Island? Uh, oh, Rock Island Public House? Public House. Yeah. They were having like a little fest going on. And they had, uh, there is a video, I think, of that Dev or Maeve posted of me. I think it was, a. I want to say it was a dolphin. I, I, oh, right? you're on like a mechanical dolphin? Yeah. <laughs> I like fall off instantly. Like, Dude, it's it, a dolphin. It, they're so slippery. It was like, <laughs> I was unprepared for how, like, just holding on to, like, a plastic thing, it, <laughs> d- it didn't work out. And I was like, it just looked like I didn't try, but I was Jesus like, Christ. I underestimated this. <laughs> so I don't know if I would ride a mechanical bull because I, I did not have a good showing on the dolphin. <laughs> I'd do it and then get, like, sick. Afterwards, after you're like, on after it for like, like ten seconds. You're on it for like not even that long. Man. You're like you think you can do it, and yeah. then like you like eh. once you fall, once you start to fall, you're like that's it, I'm yeah. going now. Then it's, then it's, it's over. <laughs> it's game over. So that's Friday up in Evanston. 
a couple of events Saturday, man. Uh, let's start with Capone's, man. They're having a customer appreciation day. Okay. So Capone's is one of these spots, you know, kind of like uh, Beer Temple or Open Bottle, where they're always like sampling out the goods, mm. you know, stop by for a tasting kind of thing. And they're slashy, right? Yeah. And they, well, no, they, no, don't, have, they don't have any taps. Oh, okay. Capone's. Okay. But Fishman's did. You're, thinking, you're probably thinking of Fishman's. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. This is northwest side, you know, not too far apart. Um, Saturday from 2 to 6, they're going to have a customer appreciation day with a bunch of stuff open from bottles and from taps. So uh, microphones um, going to be there with, with taps. And so is uh, Goose. Goose is going to have their uh, BCS Brother Wine 2016 oh, cool. on tap there. Yeah, so that ought to be good. Nice. Um, and then also Saturday, also on the northwest side, is the Independence Park Beer Fest. So this is the fourth annual. So they're going to do uh, – they got 15 breweries. Um, the proceeds go to the uh, – Special Olympics uh, winter edition of the Special Olympics up in, in Independence Park. So apparently oh, they cool. have their own Olympics. I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. That either. sounds pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah. So no dogs, no kids. Uh, this is a uh, $40 ticket. And it showcases all the Northwest Side breweries. So we're talking this new Ravinia brewery that, yeah. that we've been discussing. Dovetail, Alarmist, you know, Band of Bohemia, mm -hmm. Half Acre, Lake Effect, just to name a few. Is there a friend from Bulldog? Are they out there? Um, the who are we talking about? Bulldog Brewing, bold, right? Oh, the guys that are brewing at um at Lake Effect. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I wonder if they're still how they're doing. Are they still brewing? They're up canon, there? yeah. They're, are they? Their stuff's out there. We sh we should check in with them. Yeah, because they were on the show. Yeah. But I feel like that was the old studio. Yeah, they came old out. place. It's been a while since, but they got cans, and I believe they're doing cans. So they got stuff out there now. You know, That's cool. See them at Binnie's, I think. Yeah, Northwest Side, man. A lot of stuff happening up there. Yeah, for sure. Man, that's a, a solid weekend of stuff. Yeah. All right. Before we uh, wrap up the show here, I always like to do some beer news. Not always Chicago-related, Yeah. but what do we got? Um, light week for news. Uh, Kuma's, is, uh, they have a collaboration with 18th Street. Okay. It's called Defiance Alliance, which was also at the uh, at that fest. Uh, it's a dry hop. At the Sox Park one? At Sox Park. Okay. It'll be at all the Kuma's locations. It's a, a dry hop Kolsch collab with uh, Kuma's. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, Centennial which is a bar in River North. Um, it's actually uh, one of the newer bars in River North. It's actually a pretty cool space. Mm -hmm. um, their brewery of the month is War Pigs. So they're going to have all three War Pigs uh, beers on tap. Um, so there's oh. Lazarus. Yeah, that's we've had that on a show. Yeah. There's a Foggy Geezer. Okay. And then there's Salmon Pants, which I think is a hoppy pills or Kolsch. I think it's like salmon a hoppy pants. lager, I want to say. What's Salmon Pants from? It's from a show, right? I don't know. Are we sunny? I mean, I I don't know that I don't know the reference. Okay. Salmon pants just sounds sounds funny. Maybe it's a. Is it always sunny? Or is it a Seinfeld? Someone. Someone because it's salmon pants is a reference to something. Yeah, but yeah. all their cans look the same, so I haven't picked up. And I saw someone drinking one. And I was like, that's a different one than I had. Yeah. So, but they look the same. They're just white type on black, and you're They're like keeping it simple, just yeah. like the logo. The logo is the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Oh, so they're all gonna be all the there's gonna be a swag and giveaways and you can meet like some of the staff from War Pigs on the fifteenth. So that's this week. I wanna say that's um that's Friday. Yeah. Yeah, so that starts there. And then finally, uh the good folks at Goose Island uh have a collaboration with Spotten in Munich, Germany. Okay. Yeah, so it's traditional um it's an unfiltered amber lager. Okay. Right? So it's a Keller Marzen they're calling it. So this uh, this beer's been in the works for a while because yeah. um, we know our boy uh, Ken Hunnameter has been over there a few times to Honey shoot. Money. So uh, yeah, I've heard about this for a while that this is this was happening. It now. sounds really cool, man. It sounds like they're they're um, they're tapping it from these really big um, you know wooden vessels. Uh, it, they're gonna have it at the block party mm -hmm. later this month. Was there a video that came out with this? I bet there's a video. There's a really cool video too, yeah. man. A lot okay. of aerial shots. Uh, I gotta you know. check that out. I didn't. I missed. I missed the video. I saw the yeah. news, but I missed the video. Yeah, Mike Siegel, who's the uh, innovation manager, who's got German heritage, is he's over there with the Spotting guys. It's actually a really good, like two minute piece. Mm -hmm. it's I nice. believe uh, Sergio helped film yeah. that too. So yeah, it, it's actually a pretty slick video. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the um, the Spotting crew started up in 1397. 13? 1397. It is the oldest brewery in Munich, <laughs> Germany. <laughs> Is like, that the, what's the, do we know, the, what's the oldest brewery? That's pretty Well, the old. oldest brewery in the world, I believe, is the uh, Winstefanen. Okay. Which, uh, is that, is that, it's either in Germany or Belgium. I want to say it's the German hillside, but. Yeah, 13 really is sure. pretty legit. Like, that's Thir pretty old. Yeah. So, 
to get on board with those guys and make a traditional unfiltered amber lager actually sounds pretty cool. I'm mm-hmm. excited about that. And then um, it reminds me of, um, you know, with the line of Kugel guys. They were saying, hey, for seven generations, there were no line of Kugels that brewed over in Germany. So they went and did their beer with um, at the Hop, the original Hof Brau House over okay. in Germany. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, beer, man. Getting in touch with the old world and doing yeah. some fun new collaborations. So. Mm-hmm. And then uh, speaking of uh, Goose Island and AB, they just laid off a bunch of people in the high end. Um, Dude, what was it? Not not marketing people. It was uh, they were uh, they sales. Were, yeah, they were BAMs. They were like um, activation managers, basically like sales support for marketing. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like um, over four hundred people. Yeah, I know a few people that got impacted. That sounded pretty tough. Four hundred is it's not big for them, but that's a nice amount of people. Yeah, so it was probably a lot of overlap of the divisions of stuff. Like, hey. Yeah, you. Why are you here when we have this guy that does goose, but you just do ten barrel? Like, yeah. and so we can just combine. I felt like it was just a consolidation, a little bit. Yeah, it sounds like. Um, yeah, it sounds like they had. Uh, they had they they purchased these breweries, and the breweries had their own staff. Yeah, doing some of the things that they that the AB guys slotted for them to do. Once they like, oh, we acquired this brewery. Cool, we've got we've got roles for these people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a too bad is probably coming. I'd be uh I wouldn't be surprised if it, we continue to see that path a little bit more and more as like A B I wanna say like strangles these breweries like more and more like we control you, but yeah. I imagine though if you were a um you know, if you were an account manager on one of the high end accounts, you know, I think there's certain levels of like training and like, you know, exposure that you probably got access to that, you know, you could roll those over into other beer industry roles. Oh, for sure, yeah. So, you know, so mm. there's that. Yeah. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode, right? That's it. That's all we got. We got our pants are still off. <laughs> so, Nick, where can people find you, get in touch, ask about your pants. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosio. And I'm on Twitter at B Rad. Chicago Beer Pass is on Twitter at Chicago Beer Pass. Website Chicago Beer Pass. All the episodes get posted there. Links to iTunes, Stitcher, the YouTube version as well. Um, and then we talked about the Instagram a lot. We're loving the Instagram. I feel like we're trying to keep it pretty active. It's rolling. So check that out. Backslash or at or I don't know how you just search Chicago Beer Pass and we'll come up. So check that out. And we'll be back uh, next week with another episode. We'll work on some uh, off-site stuff soon. Work on how to drink our yeah. beer, too. Yeah, you would think he'd know how to drink beer <laughs> at this point. He's been doing it. <laughs> All right, take care. Cheers. <laughs>